Welcome and thank you for your time. This video is about the value communities business and is aimed at people who are looking to know more about the business and who may be seeking to invest in the value communities business. In this short presentation, we will cover several aspects of the business, but financial information is excluded that is available upon request. As the introductory slide outlines, the value communities business is about the monetization of values based social networks. It's an information exchange and management business and all of this comes from a core platform for communities to fund themselves. Let's take a look at the business a bit more. As a business, if you have an interest in the following, then this opportunity around the value communities business is of interest to you. First of all, convergence. We all know the stories about old media companies struggling to compete and become new media companies. This is because the technology is converging. There is an emerging market as information, media, technology, telecommunications carriage, social networking, micropayments and microfinancing all converge. If you look at the old media businesses that are making the transition to new media businesses, they are becoming convergent businesses. Valued Communities is a business that is structured around providing a marketplace solution for convergence. Marketplace solutions is our next topic. In a essence, it's this. For a business to operate efficiently and to remain competitive, it needs integrated end-to-end -end solutions that operate at the marketplace level, not just the enterprise level. Those businesses that provide platforms for marketplace operations are the next generation of high-tech entrepreneurs. This is exactly what Value Communities does. We use the value of free to change markets, gain market share, and for the businesses that are associated with us to gain market share. Google, in essence, provided free search to all information on the internet. Those businesses that were based upon paid content have had to change their business models. Google uses the value of free to change markets. We do exactly the same and one example is free shared interest and shared values advertising which other social networking services the likes of Google and Facebook are not able to currently replicate. If you understand the value proposition around information exchange and management, then our business opportunity is very exciting. Our database 
as we build it is absolutely unique. We are not only tracking people's goals, their aspirations, their values, their interests. We are also tracking what they are prepared to go do and how they are prepared to go do it. A whole series of value-added business opportunities come from that and at the moment we are the only people that are able to provide the level of information exchange and management services. Valued communities is ideal for people who value social responsibility. For those that understand and value the importance of community support for the preservation of a business brand. For those who see that growing their business is dependent upon the growing of communities and for businesses that believe there is a role for businesses around improving communities, improving the wealth of people, and who have a belief in the responsibilities of business, then this is exactly what value community is, is about and it's right in your area of interest. If you are interested in having fun, doing good while making a profit, and if you're interested in leaving a legacy, then please continue to watch this presentation. So who is Valued Communities? We are a information exchange and management service. Just as social networking sites provide a platform and monetize those social networks, or just as online service providers provide platform services and monetize that in terms of advertising. The classic example being Google. Our business model is exactly the same. We are a information management and exchange service. The difference is this. We do not sell on the data. We provide information matching services and we exchange that information, but we don't sell on the data. This is a competitive advantage. It provides us with a unique competitive advantage. We are a business. We do monetize the platform and provide the services around it on which we make the profit. Yes, we w want to and we do put some of our profit back into communities because it's good for our business, it's good for our brand, it's good for our customers and it's part of our values. But foremost, we are there as a business and we derive revenue from information exchange and management services, shared interest and shared values advertising. Many online service providers are unable to compete in this area. Shared interest and shared values advertising gives the advertisers a competitive advantage. There is revenue to be had from training, consulting and accreditation. 
from shared sh services and event management around the fundraising through the development of the application and services around the platform and from the payments, billing and financial transactions going through our platform. And whilst the platform is currently designed around communities to fund themselves, it can be readily extended into other market areas which we will talk about shortly. So what is the market for our service? The service is the platform for communities to fund themselves. Fundraising, community payments, engaging with communities and support for and support from local businesses. Globally there is a demand for these types of services. Whether you are a political party, a sports club, a social club, a school, a hospital, you are all faced with the challenge of where are they getting their revenue from. The Harvard Business School talks about the lack of sustainable business models for grassroots organizations. We provide the solution. Globally, millions of households spend money on grassroots communities and activities for their needs and entertainment purposes. Existing fundraising is giving limited returns to stakeholders and is a lot of hard work. We simplify all of this. Governments lack funding and are withdrawing from the provision of community services. They are seeking efficiencies and all the time the demand for community services is increasing. This is the opportunity that we address. And businesses need a way to be seen at time of purchase to engage their customer base. We provide a solution for this. So let me give you an example from the US. There are approximately 50 million low-income people who need services so that they can help themselves to better their lives. Those demand for services is increasing and the funding is decreasing. How do we as a community address this issue? 230 million middle-income Americans are looking for more services to support their needs in communities and to support the low-income 50 million Americans. This is the market that we target. There are 23 million small businesses in America that need to compete, they want to create jobs locally, but are struggling to compete. We give them a way for them to promote their businesses, to support their communities, and have the community support them and create local jobs. Now, Charitable donations in 2011 in the US were reported at 300 billion by Reuters and online advertising growing market was reported by eMarketer 
at a forty-nine and a half billion dollar industry. Given that we have a unique proposition around shared interest and shared values advertising, this is the market to be had and this is the market to be realized. One last comment. The disenfranchisement around crowdsourcing and people's distrust of incumbent social networking platforms are widely known and widely documented. Our solution addresses the problems with crowdsourcing and addresses the concerns that many people have around social networking. Again, this gives us a significant competitive advantage. So, let's look at some of our business differentiators. Our platform offering is unique. It's an integrated end-to-end -end solution, as we talked about before, operating at a marketplace level, including payments, payments aggregation, and we are monetizing social networking. But we're not just monetizing any social networking, we are monetizing values-based social networking. Our platform offers a unique level of compliance and transparency. We have integrated the games of skill and choice with fundraising so that people can have fun while doing good for their needs in their communities. And we have included businesses for mutual gain. Next area of differentiation of our business is advertising. We do provide the regular everyday common eyeballs advertising that many other online social platforms do. We also do shared interest and shared values advertising, both free and paid. We can do a greater targeting of micro adverts. We do competitive rates with better returns. And the adverts are less user intrusive because the information given is seen as value. There are very few, if any other, online platforms and services that can do all of this and even fewer that can do shared interest and shared values advertising and we use the value of free to gain market share and for our advertisers to gain market share. We have built the value of free into the business model. M most rivals have not done that and we are also changing the flow of funds, which is how markets are gained and reorganized. If those business differentiators are not enough for you, here are some further ones. We have integrated payments and billing. It is aggregated payments underpinned by trust accounting. We put a solution into the hands of many businesses and not-for-profits that is currently out of their reach. The integration of multiple payment mechanisms is a competitive advantage to us because it is almost unique Businesses want it to be as easy as possible for customers to pay, and that is exactly what we provide. 
our information exchange and management capacities and capabilities are unique and our database is very hard to copy because we are tracking and storing and obviously it's all to do with privacy opt-in and all that sort of thing the goals the interests the aspirations and the values of users but beyond that we are tracking what they are prepared to do about their goals and aspirations and we are tracking how they do it as talked about previously we don't sell on the data this gives us a competitive advantage we do the information exchange and matching the transactions and financial database are merged with messaging and social networking and there are also a whole range of services around it including businesses and community directory services and one of the unique propositions for businesses is that they can tell communities how they are supporting them so that when it comes to time of purchase those business are front of mind for people making purchase decisions we've talked about convergence and a marketplace solution another business differentiator is the business growth and how we provide a set of tools for businesses to grow their businesses and we have touched briefly in the previous part of the presentation about the flow of funds and how that creates markets and opportunities so there are many unique aspects to our business that competitors do not have and are difficult to replicate so what's the status of the value communities business the core platform available web iPhone and Android is up and running and operational with initial part partnerships and agreement in place and we'll talk about this more in a slide coming up shortly the fundraising and billing are up and running they're implemented there's underpinned by trust-based accounting with leading financial service organizations around the world and integrated with leading payment providers and integrated with leading telcos we have met many regulatory and compliance issues in some very very complicated jurisdictions and one of them is a multi-jurisdictional compliance gateway to meet the regulatory needs including those of social gaming and fundraising the business is operational as you can as we've talked about before with structures policies procedures service agreements all those sort of things in place we're growing markets in Australia and New Zealand and are looking to establish in currently in the USA and India we talked previously about strategic partners about getting through the regulatory and compliance on this slide are some of the businesses that we have worked with complied with met the regulatory needs of this one is focused on the Australia and New Zealand region obviously 
but what you can see is we have met the needs of major financial institutions such as National Australia Bank and Bank of New Zealand of payment providers like MasterCard, VisaCard, BPay, Poly. We have integrated with mobile billing and texting through NetSize, uh, Optus, Telstra and Vodafone globally. And you can see issues like integration with iPhone and Android, security, getting the whole service driven out of the cloud, through Amazon meeting all of their needs so that's quite substantive and the partners are currently growing the way the business is structured is as follows there is a holding company that has a stake in two separate companies one is the technology company that has built and operates the platform on behalf of all the users and there is a license and management company this is this business the license and management operation manages the licenses to in-country operations around the world. It's the classic Coca-Cola bottlers model. Because every country is different, because the markets are different, the regulatory needs are different, licenses are granted in country, they are then, they are then managed accordingly. So what are some of the strengths of the business? We've talked about the unique offering. We have talked about the global market and that the demand for this kind of service is increasing. We've talked about some of the issues with competitors. We've talked about how articles in the Harvard Business Review are outlining the need for services exactly like those provided by value communities. The business model is difficult to replicate. Yes, well-funded entities can come in and try and copy and may be able to get there faster than us, but there are some substantial roadblocks. Competitors have to change their business model, and that is difficult. Without replicating what we have, it is very hard for them to do shared interest and shared values advertising. And unless they have built in the value of free into their business model and their business operations, we remain at a competitive advantage. We have proven we have the vision and the ability to implement it and to extend it and to stay ahead. We have built in the safeguards that many people seek. Examples are privacy, not selling data. Our business model has factored these in from day one. Others have to change their businesses to accommodate it. And we've talked about the issue around the flow of funds and people want to know where their funds are going, what they're being used for and how they want it to be spent on the things that they want to support and need. We've talked about how the Harvard Business School is talking about the need for these kinds of services. Like any business, we have a series of weaknesses. 
the not-for-profit sector is a difficult sector to work with for a whole series of factors. Like any social networking platform, if your friends and the areas of interest are not there, there is nothing for you there. We are exactly the same. If your grassroots organizations of interest is not there, your friends are not there, then the service is not of interest to you. This is a weakness of the business. This takes time to address with better funding and better resources. They can be, the not-for-profits can be engaged better and the business can grow. It's an extended sales process plus the issues around a new product. Whilst we have done an integrated end-to-end -end solution at the marketplace level, there isn't much of the IP that can really be protected. Yes, we are vulnerable to copying and being overtaken. With capitalization, we know what we need to do to stay ahead. And in the business strengths, we've talked about how many areas of the business are hard to copy. Like any startup, there is the issue of capitalization. One of our weaknesses going forward is the we need to roll out a support network. If you have a problem with your phone, you go into the phone shop. If you have a problem with your banking and your finances, you go to your local bank. If you can't load a picture up to Facebook, it's annoying, but really, what's the issue? We are a mixture of banking, telco, social networking, and all of those sorts of things. So to get the best customer experience and to grow the market, we need to roll out the support network. We know what we need to do. It's we know how we need to do it. It's a question of market growth and funding. We are weak around institutional credibility, even though we have met the regulatory compliance, have all the existing partners in place. It's like any new business, there are some institutional credibility issues. And there is a question of returns. Our business model is low value transactions with small margins, but large numbers of users. To get to the large numbers requires further investment and when you get the large numbers you will get the returns. But at this stage it's a weakness of the business. Right, let's look at some opportunities around the business. From the core platform and the services around it can come a bunch of opportunities for services to meet the needs of government. Government is looking to outsource services. We can be the default service provider. We provide a lower cost service delivery solution for governments. Small to medium businesses need a solution to remain competitive, which we provide. Our multi-pay solution, this is the payment of any business bill using the integrated payment mechanisms through the aggregated fund and trust-based accounting can be spun off as a standalone business operation. Our shared interests and shared values advertising can be spun off as a separate business. As we grow, 
we would like to combine the platform with real world events and with media shows, radio, TV, online, those sorts of things. Again, this is an area of opportunity to be realized and it's a business that can be spun out. There are a whole range of associated services around the platform that can be developed over time and especially once we implement our own developers environment. An example being social gaming. Those building gaming, social gaming applications can link into our platform to tie it to fundraising and payments. So what are the threats to our business? Larger, better funded, better funded players. We are not able to compete with them should they replicate our business model. But as we've talked about before, there are many barriers to doing this. We have a unique proposition and we know how to stay ahead. Advertising. We offer what others cannot. However, we are missing the advertising industry experience, but our pr proposition is better. And w when we partner with others, then that threat would be reduced. There are lots of crowdsourcing sites out there whereby individuals fund individuals and bypass the not-for-profit sector almost totally. There are advantages to that and it's quicker for them to grow markets. There are several issues around crowdsourcing such as the lack of accountability and transparency on funds. One of the major differences is that there is little business reciprocity built in to crowdsourcing. Our platform includes local businesses and rewards them. So we can manage that competition. There are many donation sites out there. Many are established and supported by major players and many major not-for-profits are using them. This is a challenge to us as a growing business. The downside is that many of them are organization-centric. Our service is entirely individual-centric. This makes a big difference, plus many of the features that we provide, such as reciprocity to businesses, shared values and shared interest advertising, aggregated payments, the integration of games of skill and choice. We provide a lot of those and donation sites do not. Some other threats to the business. There are a whole series of sporting result sites out there which include fundraising and they are a way to take market share from us and they are some that established. The difference is that they are sporting only. We market to all of grassroots and have other competitive advantages that we have just talked about. There are lots of social networking sites out there that are highly established. People are not loyal to social networking sites. 
they are loyal to their friends. If their friends move social networking sites, so do they. We have a reason to overcome incumbency within existing social networking sites. Now, the last threat to our business that we'll talk about here is the aggregation. We are an aggregator of service providers. We have a dependency upon partners to provide us with services. We are not unique in this regard and the risk is common to any aggregator. Once revenues increased, the, we are less vulnerable to the aggregators. Let's quickly talk about marketing. The, uh, the overall approach is as follows. We get organizations of interest to use the service, so then we can have the individuals use the service. Once you get these numbers up, there is a benefit for businesses coming on board. It is then a mutual reinforcement and we grow through strategic partnerships. Our targets are very mixed and very diversified. They have to have a real need and a capacity to do something. So whether you're not a not-for-profit, an individual or a business, you have to meet this criteria. And again, they have to have a basic level of ICT expertise and be prepared to be different. We are targeting motivated users who will drive the rest. We are engaging them through family and friends and their networks and peer pressure, word of mouth referrals, email, social networking calls face to face, awareness and training sessions and having people of influence do the influencing on our behalf. And it's like any of these ones, once you start to get the numbers up, the reach extends. So what are some of the main risks to the business? We've talked about that if your interests are not supported, there is nothing for you on the platform. And we've covered off how we have mitigated this risk and how we drive the numbers. There is the risk of take up associated with any new product and service. And we talked about how they have to have a need, a capability to do it, uh, some level of ICT expertise, and the willingness to do something different. As the numbers grow, the dynamics of this risk change. Like any startup business undergoing growth, it's the funds to support the growth and develop the markets fast enough to realize returns. And we are no different in that regard. We have talked about the need to roll out the support network. And we have talked about copying by larger incumbents that are better, better funded. And some of the challenges that they face in trying to replicate our business model. We're, just to wrap up we're going to look at future directions. One of the ones is to increase the number of fun fundraising activities so that there are more ways, more competitions, more ways to have fun, more, more ways to raise funds. One of the things that we need to do as a priority is to build a developer's environment. 
this allows people to build their own games, their own applications that bolt in to our core platform. Use the payment services we have, use the advertising that we have. One of our next challenges is to build an application and the associated services for the monetization of social network likes. So I'll give you a quick example. There are lots of people that say they like something, but nothing happens after that. So if you like a business, that business can offer you a special promotion. If you like the business and support the fundraising campaign being ran by that business, you get a special promotion. We've talked about our business being an information exchange and management service. We need to develop and through partners build on and extend a whole range of information exchange and matching services. One of the areas to address is having individuals being able to support other individuals directly without going through the not-for-profits and tying businesses in to directly supporting individuals. So, to complement the support between individuals and not-for-profits and businesses to not-for-profits, it tie, ties in the individual support and the business support directly. There are a whole series of opportunities we want to do around leveraging the aggregated fund, such as mortgages, insurance and those sorts of things and one of the things is to extend the tool set available to reduce the costs of and the administration I will end that presentation there. Thank you very much indeed for your time and for listening. You, you can see the platform at www.vcaha.com and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us and I look forward to speaking to you shortly.